Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Yesterday I was tinkering around with the encoding PC because I wanted to get it up and running because it had just run into a few issues. And then I realized, you know what? We haven't streamed in about nine months on Twitch. Why don't I set up the encoding PC and my streaming setup in my office where I spend most of my time after hours playing games and kind of transform my gaming setup into a permanent streaming setup so I can stream if I want to, if I'm playing games. And here we are a day later and I've got it all set up. Now we've got heaps of the parts and everything already for a setup like this. So all I did was pull some stuff out of storage, rejig a few things and set it up in a way that I felt was permanent and usable. So this is my 2021 streaming setup tour. Let's jump in. There's a couple of things that I kept from the old setup that I went and put into this setup. So stuff like I already mentioned, the encoding PC, it's a 24 core Threadripper. I've actually pulled one of the capture cards out and put it into my editing PC. Actually found that I had another Blackmagic capture card. It's the Intensity Pro 4K and I forgot that I had it. So I chucked that in there to replace it because I used that card for the camera. Speaking of cameras, now I pulled one of our old Lumix G85s out of storage and I decided to use that as our permanent webcam with a little pancake lens on it. It's the 14 millimeter F2.5 Panasonic lens. It's uh, just a regular pancake lens. However, this pancake in particular is quite expensive. And before you ask, it is the Mark II version of this pancake as well. I've had it for a couple of years. I figured I'm not using that lens for shooting any video as well. So it might as well be the lens for our webcam. Now, last night when I streamed, I actually pulled out one of the GH5s to use on a really temporary setup, but I spent the whole day today reconfiguring everything that you can see behind me. So again, it is more permanent. You'll probably notice a few other familiar things if you know anything about streaming setups, but we've got a single Elgato key light up the top. Now I figured that I didn't need any more light than that. This room has a lot of nice ambient light with all the colors. Like this is basically how this room lives whenever I'm awake and working. So I figured just a single key light just to add a bit of light to my face. I don't want to illuminate the background. I don't want to do any of that. I just want to like basically light up my face a little bit and it worked out to be pretty, pretty spot on. Now to control everything on the stream is something that we've used before. However, this time we're using the Stream Deck XL because it is much, much bigger. And I, I don't have a very complicated XL setup. So what I've decided to do is I've just got the key light settings, the scene switching, starting and stopping the stream, muting the mic, and some ambient lighting controls on the Stream Deck because all of the stuff on the roof is Life X. So with the Stream Deck, I can actually control all of that quite easily. Now I was using a thing called Lumia Stream last year with the old setup in the little Nook setup, but it was costing me like $3 a month and I wasn't using it. So I ended up canceling it. So if I decide to stream more, which I'm, I'm trying to at least do it one evening, well, evening our time. I know it may be a bit of a weird like time for most people, but it works for me because it's after hours when I'm not working on video. So there's no set schedule, but I will try to do it at least once a week. I know I said this last time, wow. I sound like a broken record, but I really, really do want to do it because it was fun because last night I wasn't playing games. I was just hanging out with you guys. We were looking up retro tech and just random stuff on eBay. And it was just really fun to hang out with you guys. So that's another reason why I wanted to get back into this whole streaming setup malarkey. As far as other peripherals for the setup, I'm still using the Vissels V84 V2 keyboard. I'm using it in Bluetooth mode. I still have my MK850 Cooler Master keyboard on the desk as well because I switch between them depending on like what game I'm playing and whatnot, but I'm really maining that V84 V2 now. In terms of the mouse, now this is something I've been using for about two months, maybe maybe three months. It's the Logitech Superlight Pro. It's the white version of the mouse. And I gotta say, it's one of the best mice I've ever used. I'm purely a wireless guy these days. So I find it very hard to 
really justify having cables all over my desk. And one thing I kind of shied away from was setting up a boom arm mic setup because it kind of gets in the way and it kind of takes away from it being a gaming setup that is also a functional streaming setup and they kind of take up my peripheral vision if I'm not gaming. I mean, I've got a boom arm set up on my editing PC because I do use that for voiceovers quite a bit and that one can be moved away because there's more space on the other side of my office. But on this side, we're pretty tight for space. So I'm using the Elgato Wave 3 without a boom arm, just with the desktop stand and I just move it kind of between my chest and my keyboard. And you guys said that the audio is pretty good and I'm not gonna be too fussy about the quality of our streaming. I just want it to work and this seemed like it was a pretty good solution for like not having a boom arm. It's really easy to use, single USB-C cable. It's plugged straight into the encoding PC. So all of, if I'm on Discord and I'm chatting with people on stream and we're talking, we're hanging out, and we're like talking about topics and stuff, they are hearing me through the microphone on my normal headset, which is the Logitech Pro X Wireless Lightspeed. We actually did a long-term review of this. You can check that out in the top right-hand corner right now if you're interested, but yeah, I've, I haven't switched away from them for about a year or so, and they've just been excellent. And I'm probably not gonna switch to anything for right now. They've, they've just served me well. Battery life's pretty excellent, and they've been doing me well. You'll notice a couple other things laying around on the desk as well. I've got an Xbox One wireless controller with the little dongle, so if I play stuff like Skater XL, I can, you know, play it quite easily. I don't have to worry about it. I just turn the controller on and we're good to go. There's also a set of Edify speakers on the desk as well. Now, I, I don't use those for streaming, obviously. I use those just for listening to music and it's actually set up and plugged into my Linux setup. I've got a little DAC that splits both of the PCs. So if I'm like playing a game where I'm not streaming or I'm just hanging out and playing a game by myself, like a single player game, I'll play with the speakers on just because, you know, I don't have to have headphones on my head because sometimes they can get quite fatiguing. So I figured, you know, we'll we'll just have speakers. I've had these for a while. I'll put a link in the description to them. I'm, I can't remember the model number, but these are the ones that have Bluetooth optical input and they're about 110-ish Australian dollars from memory. So probably 70 or 80 US dollars. Now I wanna go back and just quickly talk about the camera setup. The way I'm actually doing this is with the key light stands that come with the Elgato key lights. And I bought the additional arm kit that you can get. They're about, I don't know, 50 to $60 or so, but it gives you additional arms to kind of mount stuff in any direction you like. I had these leftover pieces and I figured I would use it to mount the camera because I didn't want the camera to be too high and too low. And I wanted the camera to be a bit lower than the top of the boom arm. I used just a small rig clamp to clamp a flat plate, like a sandwich plate to go on top of that. And I screwed the camera straight into that. Now the camera setup is probably going to change. So I think we're gonna switch to the Fujifilm X-T2 because for some reason we've got a spare X-T2. <laughs> yeah, and we're gonna, I'm probably gonna switch to that. I've got a DC coupler for that coming as well. And I've got a, a quick release plate so I can just take it off if I need and the cables can stay up there. So it is a bit of an elegant solution for mounting a camera. You don't always have to use webcams. If you've got, already got like a DSLR or a mirrorless camera with HDMI and a capture card, you can use that as a webcam too. I mean, not everyone's got a setup like this, but this one is kind of one of those setups that's kind of complicated, kind of not. Everything that isn't my gaming PC, which I'm gonna come back to in a sec, is plugged into the encoding PC. I'll put a video in the description so you can check it out, but basically what it is is a 24 core second gen Threadripper and I modified a Cooler Master case with wheels so I can roll the case around. So yeah, it just makes it easier to move around and I don't have to have it in a static spot. And the way that I've got it set it up is you know, I can pile everything that's plugged into it on top of the case and roll it away. I don't know, maybe it's elegant, maybe it's not, but I found that it worked quite well. The gaming PC. Now this is the heart of me playing games in my gaming and streaming setup. There's a full build video where I put this system together. It's in the Corsair 5000D. It's a custom order called PC with a 3950X and an RTX 3090 on a custom loop. Most of the stuff is EK. 
I'll put that in the top right hand corner right now. You can check that out at your own leisure. It's an awesome PC. I've been using it since I built it. I can't even remember when I built it, but man, it is so cool. And it basically does everything I need and everything I throw at it, it just does. And you've probably noticed that huge, massive panel behind me. Yep, I'm still rocking it. It's the Aorus FV43U. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, FV43U. And we've done a full review of that monitor on our channel. You can check it out in the top right hand corner as well. A lot of the time people ask in comments on older videos, oh, if I'm still using that or like what's the story with that monitor. I didn't actually have to give this one back and I'm kind of glad that I didn't because it has been phenomenal. I used it for ages before the review and before it basically got announced. And I've been using it since then in here and it's Visa mounted and it is brilliant. So you check out our review. You can hear all of the things that I said about this panel and yeah, it's still going pretty strong. Uh, last night on stream, someone made a comment about asking if I was still using this panel and how could I sit so close? I don't know. You just kind of get used to it after a while, but I, I'm loving this setup. How does this encoding setup actually work? Now I've covered a bit about this before. We did a Streamlabs OBS tutorial, which you can check out in the top right hand corner right now. There's a lot of additional content to this video you guys can watch that we've already covered on the channel as well. So, you know, a little bit of education, a little bit of fun, whatever, I don't know. The Capture PC has got a PCIe Avamedia GC573 4K60 capture card. I duplicate this display out over HDMI and display port. Uh, you can actually mix refresh rates as well. So that one runs at 4K60 to the capture card. This is still 4K 144Hz. Then the other capture card that's in here has the camera plugged in via HDMI. We've got the Elgato Wave then plugged into the capture PC as well. And the capture PC basically just sits on the floor. It does not have a monitor or keyboard plugged into it at all because I use Parsec to control it. Basically the way it works is Parsec comes on when the PC boots up. I use my Linux machine over there and all I do is I open Parsec, click the streaming PC, and then I can control the streaming PC like any other PC. It feels quite native on Parsec if you've never used it. And that's basically the whole streaming setup. It's uh, a little bit complicated. It may be a little bit overkill, but it gets the job done. Now that's not the end of the streaming setup. We have something that we mentioned on stream last night that we're working on. So I, I, I won't say anything about that now. We'll talk about it when we're ready to talk about it. Well, I did mention on YouTube communities that we were working on a bunch of new studio stuff. Uh, the truth is, I also mentioned this on stream last night is a lot of what I was talking about is to do with camera and rigging stuff. So we've changed some camera stuff. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but yeah, a lot of what we're doing is gonna slowly transition to us fully shooting on Blackmagic cameras. We have three or four Blackmagic cameras. We usually use them for B-roll and that kind of stuff. But right now, even I'm talking into a Blackmagic, which is something that we just haven't done on the channel. So. We're slowly transitioning to using full black magic setups for everything. And we are kind of going back to the OG Gear Seeker style with our title intro cards and all this stuff because I miss it and it was cool. So it's kind of like a take on that. You probably noticed it at the start of the video. Anyways, guys, I'm done here. I've, I've talked for about 20 minutes. I'm going to cut it down to a nice size so you guys can enjoy it. But if you like the video, smash the like button. If you hate it, hit the dislike button twice. I'll put a, some Amazon links and stuff and all that in the description if you want to know what all of the gear was in this whole setup. I'll put a link to a bunch of videos and whatnot. We do make money from those affiliate links, so we're not trying to hide that from you. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek and we thank you guys so very much for all your support over this really strange time that we're going through here in Sydney, Australia. But yeah. I'll catch you next time, and I may be streaming on Twitch when this video goes live. I haven't decided yet, but maybe I will schedule it at a decent time and maybe jump on stream for an hour to hang out with you guys. We'll see. We'll see. Thanks for watching. <laughs>